Okay, um, 15 minutes, not long, is it? Um, I'm, or 10 even, yeah, a bit even faster, right? Talk faster. Um, I'm going to talk about a, a subject which is re actually rather, I have to say it's depressing. I mean, physiological ageing, doesn't matter how you dress it up, it's, it's, it's pretty depressing stuff. But I guess my challenge this evening is to try and uh, bring out, uh, well, two points to it. Actually, I find it really very exciting, and hopefully, uh, for maybe you, and hopefully for me, it's going to be quite profitable. So that's, that's what I'm going to to try and uh, explain this evening. Yeah, I have been kicking around in this, uh, whatever you call this thing we do, the, uh, the ageing business, since uh, about 2005. I published a book with Omnicom, the, uh, the American advertising agency on the 50 plus market, and that covered all, oh, I, 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 sorry, I, I modified the brand, the, the, the ageing 2.0 down to age, ageing 1. That's, it's, that's what it kind of covered. And it's all this sort of stuff, um, segmentation, you know, use of technology by older age groups, quantification markets, how you target an older age group. And uh, to be honest, there's only so much you can write and say about segmentation. You know, after you've been through a segmentation exercise for the nth time, I mean, we know pretty much everything we need to know about it. The, the thing that we don't do is actually apply it. So I thought, I, you know, for the rest of my life, I, there must be something else I can do. So I, I decided to move on a little bit, and that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Now, I'm sure one of the things that you've all found when you've, and you've heard from everybody else when you, 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 you encounter this uh, group of people and you're trying to uh, devise marketing strategies for them is they're a fairly complex bunch. Um, and, of course, what always happens is you start with the, the obvious thing is age and that's what brings us all together. But then you litter all of the other factors around that uh, that, that group uh, also are determining how they behave, their wealth, their income, their, their sexuality, their ethnicity, their education, lifestyle and everything else, and all of a sudden you, often, you find that these tend to be quite often the, the, the more important factors in determining their behaviour. And so what starts off what seems to be a fairly easy exercise gets very, very complicated. And just to make things even more complicated, we have something which is still unfolding and only really just beginning to, I think, have a real effect in, 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 in changing the fabric of many markets is, of course, the recession. So, I mean, that has changed so much. It's changed the, the balance between generations in terms of their, their spending power. And so it's, it's made things much more complicated. So thinking, well, what the hell am I going to do with the next uh, um, five years of my life? And I thought, as I said, not another segmentation strategy. And I, I came, came back to a point which is pretty obvious to us all, is that we are ageing. You know, we're physically changing. And, you know, that most of you are more in the left-hand corner than the right-hand corner, but you are on a track between left and right. Um, your bodies and, part and other, all other bits of your, your body is changing changing and I, 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 I knew something of this but uh, not, not, not really enough and so the question that uh, then goes to mind well how do you make money out of it um, and of course the the obvious thing is if we look at the the the, the, the chart of looking at products um, and and markets if we look at products that are sold to old people and are made for old people they're over in that left hand corner over there the age silo products and that's what I think probably quite a lot of you are involved in I mean the ones that have always fascinated me far, far more than those because there's about a hundred times more um, revenue coming from them is the one in the other corner which are products that are sold to all ages Ages and marketed to all ages, uh, what do you do about those? Um, so we're talking about airline tickets, we're talking about iPads, we're talking about just all the products that we buy every day, which are bought often by a large number of older people. So, I mean, what's the, what's the, the, the issues with physiological ageing with what we do with those? So there's that side of things, and I, I've, I've been doing some work there. But the, the thing that has really changed for me is I've, I've started looking at it through a completely different way. I've looked at it through the whole idea of the customer journey. And the reason for that is that so often I found with clients is that they concentrate on one thing, like the product 
or the communication strategy and then completely ignore all of the other factors that are involved in how they communicate, how they sell support and all of the other things that they do with, uh, with, with an older age group. So, I mean, if we look at the customer journey, I mean, there's nothing terribly clever here. I mean, the customer journey has all things to do with awareness. It has to do with the product, obviously. There's an online element, there's a physical element, um, the, the product itself and then the, the support of the product. And what I thought I'd do is to look at that through a different prism that's been done before, which is through the prism of physiological aging, the aging of the, 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 bo the body, the senses and the mind. And once you start doing that, it all starts to get a little bit more complicated because those three things suddenly branch out into quite a lot more different aspects. So you've got eyesight, taste, touch, hearing, the cognitive decline, changes in many, many different ways. And then as far as the body, you've got the changing the skin, dexterity, flexibility, muscle change, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and suddenly you find that there's a lot of physical changes going on there. Uh, and you know, how do you then apply them to, uh, to, to the, the, the 20, well, in fact, 25, that's the, the ones that, uh, that we, 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 we've come upon. So you've got 25 effects of aging going on there. And if you look at what that means, so if we look at the, the customer journey there and we look at say product, um, that will break down into the, the assembly of the product, the design, packaging and uh, pricing. So if we take packaging and you expand that further out, we've got the graphics, the handling, the, the uh, comprehension of how the packaging works, the opening and closing mechanisms, the text. I mean these minute touch points which are there and you're trying to understand what does physical ageing mean to that. So, I mean, every large brand in, 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 that we've dealt with is beginning to try and understand this. But it's a fairly large subject. So, there's about 200 touch points in the, in the normal customer journey. So, it's, it's, it starts to get difficult. So, I went to look for a book where I could find out what does it mean for marketeers. Not for, not for, not for, not for uh, medical people, but as a marketeer, as a business person, where can I read about this subject? And there isn't one. So there is now, and, uh, and which will be published next week. So, Marketing to the Aging Consumer. So, a book which purely looks at physiological aging and how it affects uh, both product and also the customer journey. Okay, but what you tend to find, and I tend to work with larger clients rather than smaller clients, is that you, you, you're, you're, you're t I mean the, the theory is fine, but trying to then move forward into, into more detail. The things which suddenly will, will, will bring you to a halt in doing work is people want metrics. I mean, is this brand better than that brand? Is this country better than that country? How does it work? If we change this, will it improve, etc., etc.? And they want process and they want actions. And so we do some research, what can we then do as a result of it? And find the, the, the intellectual property of the book is one thing, but to move that forward you need something else. And so we then took all of that stuff and put it together into a software tool. And I'll very briefly explain. So you've got 25 effects of ageing, you've got all these touch points, and then if you start to look at, say, an age group in the, the late 50s, as distinct to the, the, the late 80s, the different effects of ageing are going to be different, so you need to take that into account. So all of a sudden it becomes scale, and it becomes something that you really then need to, uh, to, to look at. So the first thing to do was to look at each touch point and then look at that versus the different effects of ageing and to try and devise the questions that you would use if you were trying to evaluate them. So if it's the, the, the packaging, what questions would an auditor use if they were trying to evaluate each of those tiny little touch points? And once you start doing that, you then have to have a mechanism by which you can do that. And thank you, Mr. Apple, for the iPad. So an iPad app um, we developed, which enables an auditor to go through and look in detail at the whole of the 200 touch points that a large brand has.
And since we're talking at quite large, we're probably talking internationally, we need something which is going to be capable of uh, driving the analysis and, uh, and being used internationally, so we have a cloud-based uh, web tool for doing that. But what we then find, of course, is that the same questions you ask about the touch points on a consumer are not that dissimilar from what happens to an ageing employee. So you've got the whole ageing employee business. And what happens to the ageing citizen? So you've got the age-friendly citizen. And then what happens if you're looking at, say, a customer journey in the customers and the customer in the traditional sense, but the medical journey? So what happens from the point of, in, in, the, in our terms in the UK, from the, from the GP through to the, um, the, the acute hospital and all the way through? How age-friendly are each of those individual touch points there? And where can you find out? Nowhere. And so the same type of analysis can be used there, and that's why we're working with individual companies who are developing those particular journeys. So I was going to play you a video of it, but I'm not because we don't have time, but I'll give you some references where you can look at it. So, I mean, what have we found? Physiological ageing really does have a lot of potential. It has mar market potential because, it, of course, it drives new products. As people age, they need things. They need hearing aids, they need glasses, etc., etc. There's the whole customer experience thing, which has, has developed a life of its own now, which we can now measure. There's other types of customer journeys, as I said, there's the what happens to the ageing employee, what does a large company like BMW do when it tries to evaluate each of the touch points it has with its ageing workforce. I mean, it's at detail level you have to do it. And then there's the specific experiences, so we have major retailers. What do you do if you're looking at, very, at the absolute detail within a retail outlet of, uh, of what happens to the, 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 the tiny touch points there with an ageing population? So I mean, the, the thing is now moving forward at a pace. So physiological ageing, boring, frightening sometimes, but I think it's going to go up the list of uh, aspects of marketing that we general marketers have to use and understand because it's something which affects so many of the very detailed points in which they then base their more sophisticated strategies. You have to under it's no good having a, a, an engaging um, advertising campaign if the person can't actually hear it, see it, understand the language and then relate to it. And so you've got to get that base level done first. So thank you very much. That's going to be, when you get the PDF of the thing, there's lots of individual links which take you through to videos which show you the tool, show you the book, download sample chapters, and then, of course, the mandatory numerous links for all of the blogs and everything else. So great. Thank you.